Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Himoff, the Executive Director of Action Utah, and I'd like to welcome you to the fourth and final event in our What's on Your Ballot series. After exploring the seven constitutional amendment questions that will appear on ballots statewide, we are now turning to who is on your ballot, the types of candidates you can expect to see and how to learn about them so you can cast informed votes up and down your ballot this election season. Now, for those of you who are tuning in live, please feel free to type questions into the comments section and our team will try to answer them as we go along today. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at the candidates on your ballot this year. Here is a list of all the levels of candidates that will appear on your ballot. You will see US president and their vice presidential pick, US representatives for all four of Utah's congressional districts, state offices, county offices, school board, and judges. This is a presidential election year, so the top question on your ballot will be for the presidential pick. There's a lot of misinformation around presidential candidates, and understanding candidates means employing a few basic media literacy techniques. We recommend to voters that they use multiple sources, preferably centrist news sources or news sources with a variety of ideological leanings to understand the candidates' positions. Read news articles in their entirety, not just the headlines, especially if you plan to share them with others. That prevents the spread of misinformation. Also, branch outside of your ideological bubble for information and political conversations. You'll get a more well-rounded view of the information. To beef up your media literacy skills, you can use our media literacy guide, which you can find at actionutah.org. You can also find out about the candidates from their websites, which outline in greater detail their platforms and plans. This is one of the best ways to understand candidate stances. Next, you will find national and state candidates on your ballot. The other national candidates include all four of Utah's US Congress people. No US senators are up for election this year. The state offices up for election include the Utah governor and lieutenant governor, attorney general, state auditor, that's the chief watchdog for the state, and state treasurer, the state's chief financial officer, as well as state legislators, with about half of the state's senators and all state representatives on the ballot this year. There are several sources you can use to learn more about these candidates, including local sources like the candidates' websites, articles, forums, and town halls. There are national sources like votesmart.org, vote411, and Ballotpedia that offer unbiased reviews of incumbents and candidate surveys. You can also use Action Utah's annual vote tracker, which will show you how your incumbent state legislators have voted on key issues over the years. Lastly, you can learn about the candidates through debates. The Utah Debate Commission is hosting a series of debates on state and federal candidates, including the first congressional district debate, which occurred on September 24th, the Utah governor debate, which occurred on September 29th, the fourth congressional district debate, which occurred on October 12th, the third congressional district debate happening tonight, the second congressional district debate happening on Monday, October 19th, and the attorney general debate on Wednesday, October 21st. As you can see here, these debates are airing on most local TV news stations and on local radio stations, on air and online. In addition, the Better Utah Institute and League of Women Voters have partnered to host a series of debates on some of the legislative races. You can catch these online or on social media. Now let's look at the down ballot races. What is a down ballot race? Well, the term down ballot comes from the physical location of where races are listed on your ballot. At the top of your ballot are national races, then state, then more and more local as you move down the ballot. These down ballot race candidates can be harder to learn about as they don't generally have candidate websites or expensive campaigns to get out the word about them. Therefore, a lot of people skip these races and don't cast a vote on them at all. But there are often still ways to get to know these candidates, and many of the down-ballot offices serve government functions that impact our daily lives, and the selection of these elected officials is very important. For instance, 
district attorneys can have a tendency to stay in office for a long period of time once elected, and they can have a great impact on a county. So it's important to learn as much as you can about these candidates. Let's take a look at county offices first. It's totally understandable if you don't even know what these offices are or what their responsibilities are. So let's take a look at them briefly. County mayors are like the county's chief executive officer in mayor council county structures. In those structures, there's also a county council which acts as the legislative branch of the county government. However, in other counties that have a commission structure instead of a mayor council structure, the commissioners act as both the legislative and the executive branch. Now county clerks direct countywide elections and serve other functions. County assessors determine the value of properties for the purposes of taxation. County recorders keep the official records of the county, including mortgages and deeds. County district attorneys represent the county in all court cases and perform legal duties for that county. The county sheriff protects and serves the community through law enforcement. The county surveyor provides surveying and mapping services, and the county treasurer bills and collects all property taxes. All candidates for county offices are partisan, and they may have candidate websites or even have taken part in candidate forums or town halls, so that's one good way to learn about them. Candidates can also choose to post information about themselves on the state election website at vote.utah.gov. Simply click learn about the candidates and issues and enter your address to see a list of candidates that will appear on your individual ballot. Then you can click on each individual candidate and see if there's any information posted about them. If not, you can always consider contacting your candidate and asking them to submit information for Utah voters. One great way to get to know about incumbents on county councils or commissions is by attending a meeting. Commissions and councils meet regularly with meetings listed on their websites and open to the public. Another possibility is to do an internet search for articles or other information about the candidates, like what is their business or profession? Have they been in the news, et cetera? You can also reach out to candidates directly. Call or email them and ask them to share with you their ideas, their values, and their ideology. Elected officials hear from constituents every day, and it's okay to reach out to the candidates who will represent you as well. In addition, VoteSmart.org does have some information on county council and county commission candidates. Another type of candidate you will see on your ballot is school board candidates, both for the state and local district school boards. Not all local district seats are up for election, so not all voters will have local district candidates to vote on. It's worth noting that this is the first year that state school board will be a partisan race in Utah. You can check the state elections website, vote.utah.gov for candidate profile information. And as with county commissions and councils, school boards also meet regularly. So another great way to learn about incumbent candidates is to attend these meetings. You can also do online searches or contact candidates directly for more information about them. The last type of candidate you can expect to see on the ballot is judges. In Utah, judges are appointed to the bench, but voters get to decide whether or not to retain them in their positions. This is called judicial retention. It can be hard to get to know the judges and how to vote on them, but there are a few resources that exist. VoteSmart.org does contain some information for justices of the Utah Supreme Court. Also, sometimes the Utah Bar Association will take a position on certain judges, which they'll list on their website. The best source of information is the Utah Judicial Performance Evaluation Commission, or JPEC, which you can find at judges.utah.gov. I recently had the opportunity to sit down with Jennifer Yim, the executive director of JPEC, to learn more. I'd like to play for you our brief conversation now. Every partisan election year, voters get to decide whether or not to retain judges in courts around the state. But how can Utahns learn about the judges and cast an informed vote? We're here today with Jennifer Yim, the Executive Director of the Utah Judicial Performance Evaluation Commission, also known as JPEC, to help us understand the judicial candidates on our ballots and how to learn about them. Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, Utahns don't actually put judges on benches, right? And so what is the process by which a person becomes a judge in Utah? 
Good question. Utah has a model process for the selection and retention of judges. It's called a merit selection process. And at the state level, it uses a bipartisan nominating commission to vet applicants who want to be judges. And it vets them based on their experience and their skills um, and creates a list of nominees um, for state court judges for consideration by the governor. The governor then selects from that list of nominees and makes an appointment. Um, and interestingly, partisan affiliation um, is expressly prohibited by statute from consideration. Um, after appointment, the Utah Senate then must confirm the appointment. Perfect, that's very helpful. And so why do voters get a chance to weigh in on judges? Well, the Utah Constitution actually requires that judges stand for an uncontested retention election at the first general election at least three years after appointment. And then every six years or 10 years, if you're a Supreme Court justice, um, thereafter to be given permission by voters to serve another term of office. Judicial retention then is that permission to continue to serve. It's the voters who get that say. Um, and unlike other candidates on your ballot, um, it's a simple yes or no vote and there's no opposing candidate. So JPEC is a really great resource for me as a voter to understand or have some evaluation by experts to understand these judges and cast an informed ballot. Why does it seem like JPEC often recommends all the judges for retention? Is a question I think that's a really great one and is very poorly understood because much of the work that we do outside of voting time um, is very is not very well known. Um, we work with judges throughout their terms of office um, to help them get performance feedback. But in addition to that, one other reason is because judges get to review their reports from JPEG before they make that decision about whether to seek another term of office. If, they, if the judge decides not to seek a retention election, the report done about them remains confidential by law. So the most frequent choice by a judge who receives a negative retention evaluation is retirement. Um, it's another way that the retention system works to give the people of Utah the highest quality judges. So what can I do as a voter to learn about these judges if I'm not someone who's already involved in the judicial system? That is exactly um, the challenge uh, that JPEG has and that voters have. Um, most people, if we're really lucky, we don't find ourselves in court very often. And so it's almost impossible for us to know about the judges who serve our communities. Uh, JPEG's work to evaluate judges uh, can be found um, at judges.utah.gov. If you go to that website and click on Know Your Judges, you can find detailed information about every judge on your ballot. That's so great. Well, thank you so much for the work that you do. Can you remind voters one more time where they can go for information about judges for this election? Yes, please um, go to judges.utah.gov and click on Know Your Judges to find out more about all the judges on your ballot. Thanks so much for joining us, Jennifer. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. That's a review of who's on your ballot. To review what's on your ballot, and specifically the seven statewide constitutional amendment questions, we invite you to view the videos of our past events, including removing slavery from the Utah Constitution or Constitutional Amendment C, education funding or Constitutional Amendment G, and the seven constitutional amendments. You can find these videos at actionutah.org or on Facebook at Action Utah. I'll leave you with four things you can do right now. First is registering to vote. The deadline is October 23rd at 5 p.m. And the easiest way to register is go to vote.utah.gov. If you do miss this deadline, you can still cast a ballot this year by registering at the polls and casting a provisional ballot. Second, make a plan to vote. Decide where you will cast a ballot, how you will cast a ballot, and when. Third, take the voter pledge. 
to commit to voting and to helping to get out the vote this year. You can take the voter pledge at actionutah.org. And lastly, share election information like this with others. Thank you everyone for joining us. I hope this event has helped you understand the candidates and how to get to know them so you can cast an informed vote up and down the ballot this election season. Ballots are already in the mail to voters and you can cast your ballot as soon as you receive it. Now, if you do one thing to get your voice heard this year, we hope that you will vote. <laughs>